In this video, Jordan Peterson talks about how women pick up dominance cues. And so I don't think it's unreasonable to presuppose that chimpanzees can feel something like awe. Now, I would also like to point out that awe can be felt to a variety of different things. So I think that what a low-ranking chimp feels to a very high-ranking chimp is also something akin to awe. And the reason I think that is, well, first because of how low-ranking chimps act around high-ranking chimps. They act subordinate. But also because there has been studies, there have been studies with monkeys, and I think these were done with vervets, although I'm not precisely sure of the breed. They showed vervets troop. They took vervets from a troop, and they showed vervets pictures of the low-ranking, I told you this, the low-ranking vervets, and they showed pictures, the vervets pictures of the high-ranking vervets, and the vervets preferred to gaze at the high-ranking vervets. And so the vervets were, the high-ranking vervets were the target of their attention. Now, yes? They knew them. But there might also be something about them physically. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, we know that human beings can, hypothetically, can look at a, an array of middle-aged men and pick out the CEOs without knowing them. They can do it at better than chance. Now, they're not exactly sure what cues are being used, or maybe they are, and I just don't know the literature well enough. That, that, might, be, that might be part of it. Um, so we do pick up cues of dominance that are, I think they're innate. Wide jaw is one of them. You know, and, and there's weird variations on this too, so I can tell you, for example, if you show women pictures of the same man and you vary the jaw width, when the women are ovulating, they like the guy with the thick jaw, the heavy jaw, and when they're not, when they're completely opposite to ovulating, they like the guy with the thinner jaw. And so, I mean, I think this is part of the reason that women have trouble with men, actually, because I think that from a sexual perspective, they might be more wired to be attractive to men who produce monstrous sons, but, you know, like powerful, attractive sons, because from an evolutionary perspective, you're much more likely to get a grandchild, or to speak, to speak in a more Darwinian sense, you're more likely to pass on your genes if you have a son who's successful at attracting mates. And there's no reason to assume that the man who will produce sons that's more, more capable of attracting mates is going to be the sort of man, A, that will treat you right, or B, won't fool around. Because basically you're gambling in some sense that your son will have the opportunity to fool around because that's your best bet in terms of moving your genetic material forward. Um, why is it that a wide jaw, have they, what is it about a wide jaw? Dominance. Testosterone. Yes, it's teeth. We bite. So a heavy, more muscular jaw, like people don't anymore, but chimpanzees certainly bite. But are they more dominant in a social sense? Yeah, they are. They are. Wider face is one of the markers, actually. Yeah, yeah. So these are, you know, I wouldn't say they're overwhelmingly powerful effects, but they're detectable, you know. So, and it also goes along, I think, with some things like preference for symmetry, because, you know, there's a higher probability that an asymmetrical person has had something go wrong with them at some point in their biological development. So people find symmetrical people more attractive. And that, that's the truth even for, for creatures like butterflies. So there are butterflies that will not mate with another butterfly even if they're asymmetrical by almost an unmeasurable amount. So they're very, very attuned to 